The most enduring and vital relationship I'll ever cultivate is the one with myself. All other relationships ebb and flow, even lifelong marriages eventually conclude. I am the only constant in my life. My self-love is perpetual, so I must examine this relationship. Am I motivated to rise each day? Do I relish my existence? Do I enjoy my own company? Do I value my thoughts? Can I amuse myself? Do I appreciate my physical form? Am I content with solitude? How can I expect a healthy relationship with others if I lack one with myself? Without self-love, I'm always seeking another to complete me, bring happiness and aid in accomplishing my ambitions. Such dependency is a surefire route to failed relationships. As Wayne Dyer, the author, asserted, a relationship where two become one leaves two halves. Expecting another to mend your life or be your better half sets you up for disappointment. Before embarking on a relationship, you should be wholly content with yourself. Also, if you're involved with someone who lacks self-love, you'll never meet their standards because of their insecurity, dissatisfaction, jealousy, self-contempt, or bitterness. Too frequently, we deplete ourselves striving to be enough for partners who don't know how to accept our love due to their self-loathing. The attributes we attract invariably mirror our own beliefs about ourselves and our relationships. How others perceive us mirrors their own narrow perspective on life. It's imperative to realize that life has always loved us unconditionally. Jealous individuals lack self-worth and are profoundly insecure. Jealousy essentially communicates, I'm insufficient, I'm undeserving of love, hence my partner will surely cheat or leave me for another. This breeds fury and blame. Remaining with a jealous person implies that you believe you don't deserve a loving relationship. This principle often applies to spousal abusers too. They either originate from abusive families and perpetuate the pattern, or they refuse to take responsibility, blaming the world and their partners for their own self-esteem deficit. Abusers will continue their abusive behavior unless they seek therapy. Such individuals are usually accompanied by resentment towards forgiveness, a critical issue for them. They need to be cognizant of their patterns and open to change. All my relationships are shaped by those I had with my parents. This notion was an epiphany when I first learned of it. I participated in Sandra's loving relationship workshop, expecting to gain insights into cultivating a loving relationship. I was astounded to discover that we would focus on our parental relationships. By the workshop's conclusion, I realized that my childhood tribulations were the root of my relationship issues. The abuse endured by my mother and me, the absence of love in my childhood, all bled into my present relationships. It's not surprising that I attracted abusive partners or that they always abandoned me. It's not surprising that I constantly felt unloved and unwanted or that I always had terrifying bosses. I was merely implementing what I learned in my childhood. This workshop was pivotal for me. I shed considerable resentment and learned to embrace forgiveness. My self-relationship dramatically improved and I never again attracted an abusive partner. So instead of wasting our energy blaming all men or all women, we should divert our focus inward and work on nurturing our self-relationship. Consider reflecting on the dynamics that existed between you and your parents, or between your parents themselves. What present-day frustrations do you carry towards the males and females in your life? Imagine your reactions to statements like, he never, he always, she never, she always, men do, women don't. Did your parents behave towards you in this manner? Was this the way your mother interacted with your father or your father with your mother? How was affection displayed in your childhood household? To tackle deep-rooted relationship fears, it might be necessary to revisit your juvenile bonds with your parents. What are the compromises you need to make in a relationship? How do you lose your identity within it? What childhood messages made you perceive relationships as challenging? Start affirming self-love. Maybe you have trouble establishing boundaries leading to exploitation. This might communicate to others that it's okay to disrespect and take advantage of you and that you don't value yourself. This doesn't have to continue. Starting today, validate your self-love and respect. Repeat to yourself frequently while looking in the mirror, I love you. This simple phrase is a potent healing affirmation. As your self-love increases, your relationships will reflect this love and respect. 
Support groups such as Codependents Anonymous or Al-Anon could be beneficial as they help you set boundaries in relationships and reconnect with your self-love and respect. Find a local group via your telephone directory. I believe that our interpersonal relationships are largely influenced by our early comfort zones. If we were treated with love and respect as children, we associate this with feeling loved. If not, as was the case for many, we learn to tolerate non-acceptance to fulfill our needs and to feel loved, consequently equating love with mistreatment. This becomes a pattern that, formed in childhood, unknowingly shapes all our relationships. There is no gender bias in this belief pattern. However, it tends to be more common in women as they are culturally expected to be more open about their vulnerability. But this is changing as more men are starting to acknowledge their vulnerabilities. I recommend Robin Norwood's Women Who Love Too Much and Barbara DeAngelis's Making Relationships Work for further insight. Here's a universal affirmation for everyone. I open my heart to love and I am safe. Self-improvement is vital. Expecting your partner to change is a subtle form of manipulation and superiority. Instead, allow your partners to express their self-exploration, self-discovery, self-love, self-acceptance, and self-worth freely. If you're searching for a partner, list out all the qualities you seek, not limiting yourself to superficial traits. Review the list and see how many of these qualities you possess. Are you ready to cultivate the qualities you lack? Ask yourself, what is holding back the attraction of the right person towards you? Are you open to change your perception? Is there a part of you that feels unlovable or unworthy of love? Are there habits or beliefs that keep love at a distance? Do you find yourself saying, I don't want to fall in love to avoid a marriage like my parents? You may feel alone. It's often challenging to feel connected to others when we are disconnected from ourselves. If so, invest quality time in yourself. Be your own best friend. Reconnect with what brings you joy and indulge yourself. Often we look for love and connection in others, but these are reflections of our relationship with ourselves. What do you feel entitled to in a relationship? If you approach from a place of need, can you truly attain what you desire? This usually points to a belief system rooted in undeserving. Do you genuinely believe you cannot have what you deeply desire? This mindset doesn't have to be your truth. You can begin to change it now. Write down your beliefs about men, women, love, marriage, commitment, fidelity, trust, and children. These lists can expose negative beliefs that need transformation. Clearing these ingrained messages may result in a starkly different next relationship. Most psychics report that their clients usually ask one of three questions. How can I find a partner? How can I end a relationship? How can I improve my finances? If you want to exit a relationship, use the potent tool of love. Declare, I bless you with love and I let you go. You are free and I am free. Do this regularly. Clearly define what you want in a relationship. Meanwhile, focus on self-love and fully accept the other person as they are. As you evolve internally, the other person will either adjust to your needs or exit your life without causing pain. Always start with self-love and gratitude. Everything else will follow. Use the affirmation. I now recognize my worth. I choose to love and appreciate myself. Resolving past relationships is crucial before entering a new one. If you often think or talk about your previous love, you are not ready for a new one. Idealizing the past love could be a defense mechanism to avoid present vulnerability. As Marianne Williamson states in her book, A Return to Love, in every interaction, we are either moving towards or away from love. To be truly content and lively, our decisions should lead us towards love. Here are affirmations for your personal relationships. I am here to learn that only love is real. I am realizing my wonderfulness. I choose to appreciate and admire myself as a magnificent creation of a loving God. I am infinitely loved and accepted now. I am ready and open for a wonderful, loving relationship. By nurturing positive, loving thoughts, I am creating a loving and supportive relationship. I open my heart to love. I feel safe expressing my feelings of love. Everyone enjoys my company. I bring joy and laughter wherever I go. I speak from my heart. People love me and I love them. I am at peace with life. 
I always have the perfect partner in my life. My love for myself keeps me safe and secure. I am on good terms with life. Life loves me and I am secure. I envelop everyone in my life with love, irrespective of gender. This includes my friends, family, colleagues, and anyone from my past. I affirm that I have wonderful, harmonious relationships with everyone where mutual respect and care exist. I live with dignity, peace, and joy. I expand my circle of love to include the whole planet, and this love multiplies within me. I have unconditional love within me, and I express it to everyone. This unconditional love includes me because I know I am deserving of love. I love and value myself.